Morning from CES 2016. My name's Rob Stott. I'm here with Tech Connect at uh, CES this week, and today I, I got with me Mark Dornbosch, Retail Practice Lead at Market Source. Mark, tell us a little bit what, about what you do uh, over there at Market Source. Uh, so the, the Retail Practice Lead is, is uh, really an architect solution for, uh, for field sales organizations. Um, I kind of work as the internal consultant at Market Source to help our clients navigate through our processes and then uh, provide coverage analysis. Gotcha. All right. So I, I know you guys got a, a lot of uh, interesting trends and in everything that you're following. So um, I, I think why don't we just dive right into them? What you know, you're here at CES. This is you know the the hub of consumer electronics and everything that's happening in the world of technology today. So what sort of things have you noticed, or what really stands out to you? Sure. This week? No, the thing about CES is that you know it can be overwhelming if you if you when you're walking the floor. For those of you who haven't had an opportunity to attend the show, it's a good idea maybe next year to come out. But for 2016, it looks like. You know, the mobile device is really going to continue to grow and be part of, of everyday life. Uh, it, some of the specs are the, the current millennia generation, they consume most of their entertainment on a mobile device. So the right. screen shifting is taking place where it's going away from a television set onto a mobile device. And even some of the hours that are watched during the, during the consumption are almost identical. So the people who are watching TV are now shifting and watching it on a smaller screen. Right, so it, would you attribute that to, to anything in particular? Is it, is it a type of content that's driving that or, you know, is it? Well, you know, part of it is, is uh, it's funny that some of the 90% of what's going on on a mobile device are just a few apps. Like, right. like Facebook, obviously, is something that's very important. But the video content of sports and movies and YouTube are uh, consuming a lot of uh, bandwidth um, from that standpoint, from a mobile device standpoint. Right. So that, that's funny. You think about all the apps we have on our phones, and you're saying, so if I have 50, 60, that's probably on the low end apps, how many do you think I actually use? Uh, it really comes down to just a handful. 90% <laughs> of, the, of the traffic generated by apps are just a, hind, a handful of apps. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, is there anything else about mobile, just opportunities that, that you think retailers could uh, take advantage of? Yeah, I think you know, with uh, the advancement of the, the 1080p on the phones, to be able, they're going to shift into 4K to be able to shoot video. Um, I think the technology is progressing so quickly that it's important for the retailers to be able to provide their their associates with the right type of training, the right type of content, they, to be able to share that enthusiasm that the consumer has for the product. When a, when a consumer comes into your store to, to buy a mobile device, they're buying an extension of themselves. It's their main lifeline, uh, and they want to encounter someone just as excited about the product as they are. Yeah. Any challenges uh, that they could face because of the, the, the shift to mobile? I think the challenge is, more than anything else, is just the speed of change. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, devices are changing over quicker, so it's a matter of uh, making sure that, that you right fit your customer so that they're happy with their purchase. Awesome. Um, so, are, what are, what are so obviously mobile's a huge one, but what other sorts of trends are, are you noticing here at well, CES? Well, you know, at CES, uh, this year is definitely going to be the year of 4K TV, there's no doubt about that. 4K from a pricing standpoint accelerated very quickly this year and uh, you know by the holiday season you could buy a 50 inch 4K TV under a thousand dollars which was just amazing how quickly that price came down and this year 4K looks like it's gonna it's gonna continue uh, as part of that growth uh, some of the challenges that go along with 4K is is the bandwidth from a consumption right. standpoint so if everybody's streaming Streaming content is almost, from a provider standpoint, from a subscription standpoint, is almost as much as cable now. Mm -hmm. So the people are using Hulu or they're using Netflix, and there's a lot of there's a large library of uh, 4K content there. The issue is the home broadband can't always handle the 4K. Right. So it's kind of a dichotomy there of the, with the TVs and the and the content. Right. And how how could retailers potentially uh, you know help to change that atmosphere? I think the retailers, with the, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few things. The smart TV aspect of a 4K television, they have to remember that anything below 55 inch is not going to help the consumer. Yep. You can't really take advantage of 4K content and all that. So that's one. Two, the smart TV is an opportunity to educate the customer and have all of their uh, streaming content on the device as opposed to having a separate box okay. in order to do that. And then they may want to begin to think about how can they help the, the consumer from their home connection broadband standpoint? Right now, retailers aren't very good at selling services, broadband services, security services. 
but those are things that the, the consumer is looking for to be able to integrate everything into a solution for their home. And they want it individualized. Gotcha. So when we come back here to CES 2017, do you think, do you see that potentially shifting? Do you think there will be, a, you know, an increase of, uh, you know, con consumers that are ready to con actually consume 4K content? I think there'll be a lot more 4K content. I think they're dead. And then with the, with the advent of uh, services like uh, Google, Google Fiber, mm -hmm. where the, the, the speed is going to go to a terabyte speed, it's going to make a, a magical difference in the, in the experience for the, for the content. And then the other things that will be connected in the home are going to go along with that. You have right. to have the broadband width in order to have the smart home, the 4K TV, integrated with everything that you that you want. Right, and so now you're starting to touch on the smarter. That's obviously something else we, we've seen a lot of here at, at uh, CES this week. So uh, what, what can you tell us about the IoT and, and smart Yeah, home the tech? IoT, the thing about the IoT and, and almost every retailer that we're doing business with and many, many manufacturers are, are really trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big interest in the market from the consumer standpoint. 92% say that they, they're interested in a smart home product. The issue is is that Right now, the challenge is is the languages between the devices are not compatible. So there's always some type of hub that you need to be able to control that. And I think that's going to shake out in 2016. It's going to be a, a little bit more smooth and and less of a an issue as as uh, one of these languages rise to the top and be kind of kind of become the standard. But every manufacturer that we deal with and most of the retailers right now are trying to figure that out. And I think they will by the end of 2016. I think it'll be. Be there. It's, it's been interesting to watch. I, I mean, is there any uh, particular, I don't know, IoT product or anything like that? It's some sort of service that you've seen while you've been here that sort of there's a couple of things like, wow. that are there are a couple of things that are that are really interesting. There's there's a uh, uh, Intel has a button computer, so it's the size of a button, wow. and it'll have the opportunity that anything that can be connected will be connected, and data in 2016 data is going to be king. Uh, whether you give your data or they collect your data, data is what's going to drive the sales and the individual experience for the for the person. So whether it's in your wearables, whether it's in your watch, whether it's in your fitness tracker, um, all those types of things are all going to be integrated and be able to talk to each other and collect data. And that it's it's going to be a, a, an amazing thing to watch. That's awesome. Well, Mark, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, you know, we're we're getting ready to wrap up here CES 2016 this week, and it's just been it's been a it's been Amazing. I don't know. Uh, there's not really any other word I can think of to describe CES. And there's just no other industry like but, this. <laughs> no, it's crazy. But uh, thanks for taking the time to share some of your knowledge with us, and uh, we appreciate it. So All right. Thank you. For, for Tech Connect, I'm Rob Stott. Thanks for watching.